Hello, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. It's the end of September here in my Portland, Oregon permaculture garden. I just thought I'd take a few minutes and show you around what is happening in my garden this time of year. This won't be a comprehensive video. I won't cover every section, but I wanna show you a few things that are happening and a few things that are on the cusp of happening. So in late September, we uh, experience kind of a staggering of harvests where I have finished harvesting the tomatoes and the green beans and the summer squash and they're all done for the year. And I'm beginning to process the end of my damson plums and my pears. I made a pear sauce yesterday with the last basket of pears. And I've processed the early apples as well. What I've been working on the last couple of days besides pears is also the pawpaw harvest, which I freeze pawpaw pulp. I only eat one per day and I freeze the rest. And I have this little break here where it's just beginning to be the quince harvest. And I'm very lucky that I have two varieties of quince. Um, I used to have five and I've <laughs> reduced that drastically because I guarantee you nobody needs five quince. They produce so prolifically, much more heavily than apples and you, you don't need five of them, you'll be overwhelmed. So I have two, I have a Krimskaya and a Romitnaya, and they ripen a few weeks apart from each other. And that really gives me an opportunity to process the first round for things like quince paste, membrio, um, do things like make wine or cider with them. And then I have a pause, a little bit of a respite, and then I get the second round of quince that I can process roasted or make more jam or things like that with them. I also have another respite after that before the persimmons and the jujubes will be ripe. Somewhere in the interim in there, my conquered grapes will be ripe. So I have these little bursts of uh, busyness where I'm needing to dedicate a good chunk of my day to harvesting and then to processing. So much of the fall harvest is how do you put it up? How do you process it? So when you're thinking about planting in your garden, you really have to build space into your calendar for the autumn for how am I going to harvest the eventual yield that comes off of this plant. So keep that in mind. Again, for me, in the beginning, I just thought quince were lovely. I loved the fruit and I planted way too many and had to remove some. So just think about that. What quantity will I be harvesting at maturity and how much time will it take me to process it? So let me show you just a couple of corners of the garden, what's ready, what's going to be ready in the coming weeks and how things are looking here in late September. There are loads of aronia berries hanging out still on this bush. I love that aronia stay plump and harvestable for months on the shrub so that if I didn't get to processing all of them in July, I can get to it now in September. A added benefit that if I want to make jam with these, if I let them hang out on the shrub until my quince are ready, the quince will serve as the source of pectin for making jam with aronia berries. Back down by the chicken coop, I have my early fuyu persimmon. Persimmons are one of my favorite crops. They have a really high bricks, so just tons and tons of sugar. And like figs, they are not acidic. And so you just get all the sweetness. I think that a good persimmon uh, tastes like eating brown sugar. They're just absolutely delicious. I'm gonna have a huge crop this year of fuyu persimmons. Absolutely not time for these to be picked yet. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know how I've spoken about how I wish I had planted these in a different part of the garden because this tree is gorgeous all year round. The fruit is gorgeous. The foliage in the fall is gorgeous and it's just wasted back in this corner. So if I had to do it over again, I would put this tree much more in the center of everybody's attention. It's just a gorgeous tree. Now, Asian persimmons are self-fertile, so you only need one. Early fuyu often fruits heavily on alternate years. So last year I got a light crop, maybe about 20 persimmons off of it. And this year I'm gonna have a ridiculous crop. But not yet.
So I'm a tiny bit worried about the firewood situation for this winter. We're gonna be having fires here in the next week or two. All of this is cured wood that I can use, but normally I have these bays filled all the way up above here. And of course, I always have way too much wood every winter. So some of this wood down here at the bottom is quite a few years old and I'm gonna try and burn all of that. But part of me, maybe it's the like tiny bit that's a prepper, tiny bit that worries about, you know, the zombie apocalypse. I feel more comfortable when my wood stores are all the way up to the top going into autumn and they're just not there. So a little bit nervous about that. Might have to be rationing as the winter goes on if we have a harsh winter. This year I planted several kinds of Michaelmas daisies and you can see it's still quite small. And again, they bloom around Michaelmas. So this is the appropriate time. I feel like they're not grown that much in the American garden. Um, but I just really, really love those asters for late bee food. Not just bees, but also hoverflies. They'll go all the way into October. rain garden is still looking good. Lots of things kind of winding down. I leave all of the seed heads. Want to make sure I leave those not only for saving seed if I want to broadcast that and get more echinacea, but also just because they are a great uh, habitat and food source for wildlife. So moving down into the annual veggie patch, you can see I still have some cherry tomatoes going. I took up most of my other tomatoes. Was digging potatoes here. I started taking beds and really chopping up and putting things on the bed to decompose over the winter. A joke my husband and I had as I was removing things and found some really overgrown summer squash. We joked about making a hoogle bed out of them, so I've put them here for now. I may actually cut them up and let the chickens eat the mature seeds inside, or I may just continue to mound up compost on top of them. My tree collard's doing well. The asparagus is starting to turn here, and that means pretty soon I'm gonna be cutting it back. I have left one tomato plant because it's got so many green tomatoes on it. I've pulled up all of my other large tomatoes. I'll be making either fried green tomatoes or pickles with these if they don't ripen up over the next few days, but you can see I have several left that have no sign of turning red yet. They won't go to waste though. So here's a good example of when to pick your squash, being careful of the spider webs in here. This squash, you can see the vine is dying here and the squash here is starting to turn brown. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this sweet meat today and harvest it. But this one is quite green. The vine is quite green and the squash itself, the stem quite green. I'm gonna let this continue to keep growing. Let's see if it'll get a little bit bigger. So that's how you know when to harvest. Stem, stem turning brown, vine dying, go ahead and harvest. Still green, getting nutrition from the plant. Let that keep going for a while. The rain won't bother it at all. It's going to be a good year for sweet meats. So it's not quite time to harvest these quince. You can see most of them are still quite green, starting to get a little bit of yellow on them here. In a couple of days, I'll be harvesting these and I'll be making a video all about them. You can see they've kind of fallen into the path here. Let me turn around. So it's a little bit tight to get through right now because the quince is really taking over the path. The path goes right through here. You can see how tight it is to get through right now. But in just a few days, I'll be harvesting these and all of that weight will come off of these branches and they'll 
pop right back up. And then I'll be doing some pretty significant pruning on this quince bush. This is Cydonia oblonga quince. It is the quince tree, not the Japanese quince, but I have it trained as a bush. You can see it has multiple trunks here, it has five trunks. I'm just beginning this project. We're getting ready to put an egress window in. I have to move an insane amount of dirt out of this area in order to do that. I've taken all of my plants out here, which was quite a bit of work. And now I am working on starting to remove the soil. Up in the front yard, the pawpaw harvest is almost done. This tree right here, Rappahannock, is completely done. You can see here that my Nikita's Gift persimmons are starting to get a little bit of color on them. They are not ready to harvest yet at all, but we're getting a little bit closer. Same with my early Fuyu in the backyard, way too early to pick those. But I still have some pawpaws here, as you can see. This is the tail end. These are not quite ready to pick yet. But down on the ground, oh, those are ready. When they hit the ground, I know that they're ripe and I should pick them. So at the end of this video, I'll pick those up. So thanks for watching today. I hope that you are able to enjoy this lovely, lovely season in the garden with all of the ebb and flow, all of the dying back and all of the productivity mingled in together. I hope you're able to connect with your garden and not only get harvests that you can appreciate in terms of food, but also in terms of the experience of the September garden. So I'll be back uh, later this week. I hope that you are all staying safe. If you want to check out my Patreon down in the description, if you're interested in supporting this channel, that would be awesome. Thanks.